All right, so today we have a 2005 Mazda Tribute with the, uh, I believe it's a 3 liter V6 engine. We're going to do valve cover gaskets on it. Um, this is the same thing as a Ford Escape of the same model year. I'm not sure what year range this particular engine uh, is used in these Tributes and uh, the Escapes. Also the, uh, what is it, the Mariner? I think that's is that a Lincoln Mariner, but anyway, if you've got the V6 uh, 24 valve 3 liter Ford engine, uh, this should be uh, at least somewhat applicable to your situation. So, of course, you've got a uh, engine cover. We're going to get taken off here, and then we're going to have to remove. Looks like maybe throttle body. Get it out of the way. Uh, EGR valve, I think I'm going to try to just undo the big nut there and uh, leave it attached to the intake. Some wiring harnesses. Uh, of course, the intake's going to have to, the upper intake's going to have to come off to get to the valve covers. But, I mean, it doesn't look like too bad of a job. So, this is my first time doing it. So, however long it takes me to do this is going to be roughly how long it should take you. Uh, so, let's get started. First thing I'm going to do. I'm going to blow everything out. You know, this car's got 175,000 miles. And, uh, and it's got an oil leak. That's why the valve covers or valve cover gaskets are being replaced. So order you a valve cover kit and an upper intake uh, gasket kit. And that should be everything you need. If you wanted to order a new gasket for the throttle body, that wouldn't be a bad idea to do. Uh, and we'll just see what else we may need uh, whenever we get into it. Let me get this thing blowed off. Alright. So that kind of helps clean out the holes, clean out all the debris in the holes. Just makes it an easier working experience. And I ask myself every time I accept one of these jobs why why I still do this. But anyway, the number one reason, if you want to know, is for these videos. I do this so that you guys can take a look. The people that, you know, want to tackle this themselves. And, uh, you know, because the shop, I don't even know. I don't even know what a shop would charge to do this. It'd be quite a bit because they're going to lead you to believe that it's an all-day deal. They got to remove the intake. They got to remove all this stuff. Most people look at this and they get very intimidated because obviously this valve cover, the only part of it you can see is this part right here. You can't hardly see the back one because the intake's covering up. So a lot of people think, man, this is an undoable deal. It is not. It is, once you remove a couple key components you realize how accessible everything actually is and that's on the majority of these vehicles that have engine covers and upper intakes that are typically easy to remove and as you're about to see so uh, let me figure out how I'm going to clamp the camera and uh, we're going to get started Okay, so obviously the first step is to get this engine cover off, and this is just 8 millimeter or 5 sixteenths. Uh, either one will work. I believe there's only these two. Okay, there's another one down here, but it's already been taken off. And so this little uh, hose, there's a little uh, spring, plastic spring-loaded clip, retainer. All you do is you push it over with your finger, pop it right up. We'll get that out of the way and then this whole cover pops right off. There's 
a nut here and a nut here. This nut was already off on this vehicle, and then there's a nut on this end. Don't lose your nuts. And you can already see that a big portion of the engine is now uncovered. Doesn't look that intimidating anymore. So, next step, we're going to get this intake off here. Okay, I think the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this air box off from the clamp right here to the throttle body to the uh, air filter. These clamps right here are 5 sixteenths. You can also use 8mm or a flat blade screwdriver. That should have released everything that I need. How's it good? Alright. While you're here, may as well. Okay, that filter needs to be changed. Hide that down there so you guys don't have to stare at this point I'm going to undo the cables for the uh, throttle body okay so they're both disconnected undo this bracket This bracket, that's going to allow you to lay this monkey motion out of your way. We're going to have to have this connector disconnected. And I think what I'll probably do Okay, it's real easy to get to these bolts here for the throttle body. The throttle body's got coolant lines going to it, which I could keep the throttle body connected to the intake, disconnect these coolant lines, uh, and pull the whole intake with throttle body off. But I'm going to keep the coolant lines connected, it looks like, because there's also an electrical connector here for the, for the throttle position sensor. And it looks like if I just take the four bolts out, I'll be able to lay this throttle body off to the side. That may be the way to go, so I think that's what I'm going to do. Looks like, what is that, 10 millimeter? Let's see. It is 10 millimeter. I'll get them broke loose, and then I'll hit them with the, the wall. Run them out. Where's that other one at? Okay. So what you're going to come to experience is these little plastic keepers are about as brittle as brittle can get. So you're going to, whenever you go to pull stuff apart, you're going to have those break. Unfortunately, that's just the way it's going to be. Obviously, try to be as careful as possible, but I don't think. I mean, I just barely tugged on that one, and uh, it, it broke. body just laid out of the side and that that seals nice and rubbery still I'm just gonna reuse it I'm gonna go ahead and take it out to make sure that it doesn't go anywhere but if they're still nice and rubbery and they're still uh, extended 
above the mating surface so that whenever you put your throttle body back together it's going to compress it you're fine obviously this is cheap enough if I had one on hand I'd go ahead and replace it but I'm not going to make it I'm not going to make a trip to the auto parts store if I don't need to it's basically what that's about so and it's easy enough to get to to where if it ended up being a problem you could access it pretty easy anyway enough said so we got a vacuum line here it looks like that we need to get off and that has just got a clamp and get a light out of my face. I guess if you got the tools, use them, right? Alright, next thing, I think I'm going to leave the EGR valve connected, because there's vacuum lines, there's a tube that runs in this intake. Uh, go ahead and get that out of my way. Uh, I say I'm going to leave it connected, depends on how tight this is. Now that's, I believe, at 28 millimeter. The biggest metric that I have is 26. Uh, an inch and an eighth will fit on it but not good so I'm just going to use my metric crescent wrench Sometimes those are seized on there pretty tight, so if they're that tight, I, I would I'd go ahead and take the EGR valve off the intake side. And it looks like there's a vacuum line right here going to this solenoid, and you'll see it whenever you get to that point. So I'm just going to take a uh, what we got right here that's handy. There's a double vacuum line set up right there, and then the one that goes to the EGR valve. And there's another connector that we will disconnect. Oh, you know what? This harness that harness is connected to it, so that is felt felt like a uh, eight millimeter.
I don't know how well you can see this big harness right here. There's just a bracket that's bolted right there. And you got to take a nut off to get that bracket loose. Another, there's this hose right here, this PVC hose. Again, you got your spring loaded clip. And that should just pop off there. Brake booster hose. Uh, you can disconnect it at either end. Looks like it might be a little easier to go this route. Just another squeeze clamp. Okay, got that one. It looks like there's one more hose back here on the back. Then there's a little connector. That was just clipped. A little bracket right there and again you'll see that anything that's that I think you need to see I'll definitely show you so far it's been pretty straightforward just look around see what needs to be taken off I think at this point unless I'm missing something on the back that I can't see I think the intake's ready to come off eight millimeters Seven, eight, it looks like. And there's the intake. Always a good idea to plug the uh, the intake hole. Right here. I'm going to go ahead and clean them while I'm here. Then we're just going to shove rags down into them. Obviously, make sure you pull these rags out. Okay, now the coils are going to need to come off. Now this front one is actually the more difficult to access. Just because you got a radiator hose that's kind of in your way, I might strap it up out of the way. But we'll deal with that here in a minute. Um, let's see, what do I want to do here? Just kind of accessing what I'm going to need to do next. The one thing you do want to do is pay attention to where you got some uh, that are bolts and then some that are studs. Over here on the, uh, there's another one that was black. This was already broke. I didn't even 
there wasn't a harness attached to it. Some of these are studs, some of them are just uh, bolts, it looks like. So just pay attention to where the studs go versus the bolts. what I need to do is get the uh, coils yeah so I'm going to take these through I'm going to concentrate on this front one first once I get it replaced, then I'm going to go to the back. I like to leave. I don't like to pull both valve covers off at the same time and have everything exposed while you're cleaning it, cleaning up one of them and getting the other one, you know, replaced. I like to do one at a time. Keep keep as much covered up as possible. So let me get the uh, coils out of here. Three bolts for the coils. Spring popped out of this coil, and the boot's still, still in there. See about getting that out without damaging it. You know the boots don't actually look bad. Um, they just snap on there. Your spring is what has your spark. That's what allows your spark to go through. Basically, it's your plug wire. I'll put a little dielectric grease on there before I put them back together. This spring popped out of this one. that happens not really the end of the world spark plugs do not need to come out okay now this valve cover is pretty much ready I'm gonna get something like, uh, uh, the uh, bracket to the uh, radiator hose is broke on this one so I'm just gonna get something to hold this radiator hose up out of the way I got a little bungee This way you don't have to fight near as much. You know, if something's kind of dangling down, you're having to fight with it to hold it up out of the way while you're trying to get stuff done. Having stuff like this held up out of your way just makes it that much easier. So i got to reach down here to get the nuts 
off this valve cover. Trying to get a little clip undone for this harness, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Just so you're not curious. See these little plastic clips right here? They're just pushed down on the stud. So there's one there, and there's one down on that other end. And then you got a dipstick right here that'll kind of be in the way it looks like, but it's not going to be no big deal. And then right where these recesses are, I don't know if you can see that little recess, there's uh, bolts down here. You can feel them. You'll be able to get on them with a socket, and then you'll need a swivel, kind of like this right here. Uh, actually, that's not my swivel. My swivel's over there. I'll show you the swivel. It's definitely going to help if you have the proper tools. So whatever you see me use... I would, uh, and I'll link to them. I'll put a link to everything I can think of that you may want to get. This is a constant velocity swivel. That's the only kind I use. A regular universal joint will work too, but they'll bind up on you if you're not careful. So, uh, you know, just be aware of that. Okay, so this one here is 8 millimeter. I think pretty much all the others are going to be 10. That one looks like a 10, 10, 10. All the ones I can see are 10s. Now, we've been working on this maybe for 20 minutes. I've almost got this one off. Once I get the bolts off, uh, out of her, she'll be coming out of here. And again, try to remember where, where they go. I already know I'm going to probably forget, but... Luckily, I've got a video going that'll help me out. Okay, this one doesn't actually need to come out. That one is not a, uh, a hold down bolt. Okay, so one, two, three, four across the top, one, two, three across the middle, and then it looks like uh, maybe one, two, three, four across the bottom. So this is where I'm going to get my universal. Let me sock it. I may actually put my long extension on. I don't know if going long is going to be the way to go or not. Now this one I can see, so I'm going to get down there on it. Fill across the bottom. I'll fill this one. Okay. Oh, okay well that makes it nice. Huh. I'll show you what I just found. There's another clip down here that I, that's broken that I'm going to have to get off little harness clip I don't know if this is supposed to have any kind of a cover across the front of it or not but you can actually look straight down in between the radiator support and the radiator and you can actually see 
the bolts at least you can see yeah you can see all three of these so you can actually with a long enough extension go straight down so just something to be something to be mindful of one that I don't quite have out enough. Can't tell which one it is. try to remove these now though there's the little rubber grommet kind of wants to hold them in but if you remove at least this one that's going to help out because there's a uh, motor mount right here that they're not a motor mount but a lift point that gets in your way the dipstick will get in your way it looks like but you can overcome that I'm going to take in fact I'm going to take this dipstick out Let me show you what I'm going to do. I think you can actually see. This is just a lift point. This is so when they put the engine in at the assembly uh, plant, they hooked onto it right here. Um, and it actually come up comes up quite a bit. It, it's relatively flexible. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm just going to take and I'm going to try to pry this thing out of the way enough to where that valve cover will clear it. You could pry it right back in if needed. I don't know if it will need to be pried back in or not. look down inside your engine make sure it all looks good make sure the cam lobes look good this cam lobes actually getting a little bit of wear it looks like it's got a little mark going across it and right here at the mating points are points for RTV there's one two three four points that will need to be RTV'd just a little dab of RTV whenever you go back together. So at this point I'm just going to clean this mating surface up. I'm going to take a rag. I've got a scraper that I'm going to get down in there with. I'm going to uh, scrape as much of it clean and get it cleaned up. I'm going to do the same with the valve cover and then uh, I'll turn the camera back on whenever it's time to start going back in with it. And I want to show you, as I'm cleaning this, just real quick, the importance of having tooling that just helps. So this is just a simple gasket scraper. But it's got a bend in it that allows you to, you know, get up 
you know get get the angle you need to you know scrape stuff off but uh be out of your way you know it's not way down here trying to get the angle you're up and out of the way you know that's that's kind of what I'm talking about you know you'd be surprised having the proper tools just how how fast and easy it makes the job go so you know I see a lot of people get frustrated doing stuff and they're trying to do a, you know a pair of pliers and a screwdriver and it's like man they they got better tools that would actually make that job so much easier and faster so if you just you know before you tackle something like this go out and get you know a, a couple you know couple tools that's going to make your job a lot easier and you'll be a heck of a lot happier person in the process uh, and all I'm this is cleaning up actually just I'm not using any kind of cleaner I'm just, ta just taking a rag to it is all I'm doing and right here on these uh, spots that's got the RTV I'm just using this scraper it's my favorite scraper for doing gasket cleaning and that's it um, You can see how clean that surface is now, where the gasket mates. Right here's that seam I'm talking about, right where the pieces butt up. You can actually feel a, you know, you can clip, you can clip your fingernail on it. So what they do is they just put one dab of RTV right there. That way, when the valve cover goes on, it'll form uh, and seal that off. So don't forget to do that. All right, guys. So I got the valve cover gasket, the new one. I got the old one. Uh, what did one go? And you can see it's, I mean, it's, it's brittle. That's why these leak. The new one's nice and pliable, nice and rubbery, like it should uh, be. And I'm getting ready to go back in with the, these seals. Those are about, a, those are even more brittle. And this is what I was wanting to show you. This particular gasket kit... Just in case you run into the same problem, if you see here, there is no. There's just a, 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 a recess, right, for the uh, for the seal to sit down into. Well, the new gasket or seal has this little finger sticking out, and it's beveled toward one side. There's no way to get this in there. properly I don't know if you can see how that kind of deforms the seal now I'm assuming that's so that you can pop those out of there I don't know but I wasn't able to use them on these these did have the little uh, seal but you can see how the this one it's just on the end it's just on the one end of the seal I don't know if you can see that but it's all the way up here at the top not it's not in the middle like this one is so what I did is I just cut them off with some flush cut dikes. These are going to fit in here just fine and they're going to do the job. They're going to seal up just fine. So if you run across that problem, that is my fix. Now you may choose to go ahead and take yours back and uh, get the proper ones. And I don't know which way these are supposed to actually go in here, to be honest with you. I don't think it really matters, but we'll put these three in this way with these with the ridges up. You kind of got a flat surface there, then you've got a ridge there. The ridge I would think you would want sticking up. There is nothing. This is just a flat surface here. You can see on the old one how it's got the little finger indention right there but there's no for this new one there's no place for that I'm assuming on some year models there's probably a little concave area either on the head or on the valve cover that that will fit into this is a 2005 it does not have that so the the main gasket fit 
So anyway, just uh, be aware of that if you come across that on yours. That's what I ended up doing. Um, then we'll get these stuck in and we'll be ready to go. The only other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this tie here or that uh, bungee and I'm going to kind of bungee this out of the way just so it, you know, so I don't have to fight it going on. Those little things that you can do to help yourself that are quick and easy makes the job go a lot quicker. So anyway, I'll turn it on whenever we're ready to go back in. All right, so I've got my little dab of RTV. It's all you need on all four seams. I've got this little harness here out of the way, so pretty much I can lay it down in here and not have to fight that. Dipstick, that's the only thing you're kind of going to have to fight around, it looks like. This was the uh, lift point that I've been out of the way. Now, there is a couple bolts on the bottom that you can take out if you want to reach down there and remove that go ahead a lot easier to take a pry bar or whatever and bend that out of the way just a little bit you can probably leave it exactly where it's at it's never unless you're going to pull the engine out you're never going to use it anyway we're ready to stab this bad boy Pivot that hose up out of the way. You're just going to have to be careful about not knocking the uh, gasket out. Uh, let me see here. What's, how did we get this thing out of here? There we go. There we go. I think we got her. Now I went ahead and put the bottom bolts in. The new gasket kit. Came with new little rubber grommets here. These are on the outside of the gasket itself. These have nothing to do with sealing the uh, valve cover and preventing oil leaks. These are still nice and rubbery and pliable. So I chose not to spend the time pulling these off and putting these on. These are OEM. They're probably better than what the factory ones are anyway. So uh, I'm sticking with them. You can uh, obviously go ahead and put the new ones on if you want to, but I'm personally not. I don't see a reason to. Since most of those clips are broke, I don't think it's really. Don't really think it matters whether you get the uh, studs in the right place. If, now, if your if your clips came off in one piece. It is going to matter. You'd want to make sure that you uh, get your get your studs in the right spot. This one does matter. This is that five sixteenths or that eight millimeter. So make sure it goes in the right spot. There's only two. There's actually three non-studded bolts anyway. Okay, so let me clean my hands up before I go any farther. Okay, so I'm going to run these down. I'll start in the middle. I'm going to run the middle down first, starting at the center, and then uh, we'll just do a, kind of a crisscross pattern.
stretch that tent through that eight millimeters. That's probably plenty tight enough, but I'm going to go ahead and just hit them all by hand. Not 100% sure what the torque is. I'll look it up before I post this video, and I'll I'll post it down there in the uh, comments for those of you that don't have a a real good feel for uh, how tight things should be. I, I get if you don't do this every day, or you've never done it for a living or anything, then you may not have a you know a good feel for how tight certain things should be. Stuff like this, I don't worry too much about the proper torque. I can kind of go by feel, and I have a pretty good idea of how tight things should be. And that should do it. Oh, I need to show you guys something that I noticed. So if you look, uh, where are we at? If you look right down in that spark plug hole, you can see it's got oil in it. That means that that rubber seal that we replaced, that, uh, spark plug shaft seal was leaking. You can even see the streak of oil leaking down into it. That's pretty common on engines like this, overhead cam engines that's got the spark plugs going down through the center like that. Uh, the other ones are dry, which is good. If you see yours like that, even if your valve cover perimeter along here is not leaking, you need to replace your valve cover gaskets and specifically your spark plug shaft seals. I'm going to have to hit that with some brake clean and stuff and get that out of there. Uh, as far as I know, it wasn't causing a problem, but it will eventually. It softens up the uh, the, the boot of the uh, spark plug wire or coil and deteriorates it over time. So, uh, just keep that in mind. So, in this, I didn't ever remove this but it does just snap in and out I mean it's as long as I didn't want to try to remove it because it was uh, you know could have been brittle and I didn't want to break it but uh, anyway I was trying to get it up and over this uh, lift point and it just snapped out of there which is fine I'm gonna snap her back in and uh, we'll press on okay so now Put these coils in and uh, go after that other side. Soak that oil up. Little break clean.
Now it's nice and clean. Putting those little clips back on for the harness. And I'm going to do something about this radiator hose because it's just a matter of time before it rubs through or something because it's not. This bracket is supposed to hold it up right here. So I'm probably going to put a zip tie or something around it to hold it up off of everything. I'm going to put the dipstick back in. This side is completely done. Okay, so I'm going to remove a few things out of my way. I'm a I'm a big fan of getting getting things that are easy out of my way, to, just to make my job easier. Um, let's see, I think the first thing we can do is pop these little clips up like that. Once we get those coils out of the way, they'll be out of our way. Uh, okay, we can go ahead and this is easy enough again, the little spring-loaded clip. And again, if you haven't seen how that works, so you've got this little spring-loaded clip whenever you release that. This is probably one of Ford's better ideas. Move that pops right out of there. See how there's oil in that? Probably not real good, but so lay that right there. Um, I'm going to use these little bungees and I'll link to these little packs of bungees. They come in real handy. I'm just going to come up here on the hood that gets that all out of the way. Um, this vacuum hose looks like if I disconnect it right here, I can kind of shove it all back in the back there and kind of gets that out of our way. These harnesses. Okay, those little clips are broke. Again, you know. Everybody's got good ideas and bad ideas. Ford, yeah, probably not your better idea. Every single one of these have broke. The ones that wasn't already broke. Just trying to get them off the studs. Uh, they snap and they break. They all break right here. Luckily, they're not a real big deal, but, you know, it'd be nice if, uh, if they didn't break. Now, this harness here... Obviously two connectors, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to disconnect them. If I can. Might be better with a screwdriver.
that will get those out of my way. So, I'll just leave the coils hooked up like we did last time, pull them up out of the way, and then we'll figure out what's on the back that we're going to have to do. Now if the spring does come out like this one, not that big of a deal, but if you pull the boot on off, there's just a little tab in there. It's a good idea to make sure that that's completely down on that tab. But I can already tell you that there's oil in this one over here. lay those off to the side technically this one right here needs to be probably replaced we'll see if we can clean it up and see if it's going to be all right but let me take a look down in there yeah that's full of oil that one's got a little bit of oil in it that one's dry so these valve covers definitely need to be replaced, specifically the the uh, spark plug shaft holes. But um, hold on, I had the mirror out. Should have just looked back in there. So there's going to be a nut there. Okay, that little tab's broke. And then that one over there. Yeah, this one looks like it's probably going to be a little easier. So, let's see. Get all these broke little tabs off the... You know, this bracket looks like it's still intact. So, hopefully I don't break it in the process. 5 sixteenths. Okay, let's see. Here's my 10 millimeter. That one hopefully hit the floor. It wasn't holding nothing anyway. Oh no, that was just a piece of no, that was the nut. loose and then we'll finish uh, zipping them out with the uh, DeWalt.
resistor maybe capacitor that you need to take out over here on this uh, stud okay so I think we've got them all except for one this I think that's all of them. you don't pry on your intake. And the other valve cover. Again, make sure you look at your cam lobes. Just a little bit of a score mark looks like on that one. Alright. Just so this video don't get any longer than it needs to be. Again, I'm going to clean this up. Now, on this side, there is no RTV. It does not look like. But on this side, you'll have two, two spots. There's a spot here where the timing cover mates up to the heads. Spot here and a spot down here on the bottom side. So, make sure you, uh, you know, get that. So I'm going to get this mating surface cleaned up again just with a paper towel, maybe some brake clean, whatever other kind of cleaner you got, carburetor cleaner, whatever kind of cleaner you got, alcohol would probably do good too. I'll scrape that R the old RTV off and then I'll get the gaskets switched over on the valve cover and then uh, we'll get it, get it reinstalled. So I'm not going to make you guys watch that. I just wanted to show you how these are coming out of here. Um, so what I've got is I've just got a pick. And what I'm doing is I'm just shoving this pick down in there. And they break. Just like that. So just be prepared for that. dump the carnage out of there. Again, I'll do this one. That's how hard and brittle them, them things are.
Now again, as you can see, there's no way for this style of tab, there's no recess on this valve cover. So all I'm literally doing, I'm cutting that off about as flush as I can. It's silicone rubber, so it's going to do a good job of taking whatever shape that little uh, hole is. I mean, sometimes you hate having to do stuff like that, but I'm not running up to the auto parts store. These stick up quite a bit once that compression takes place and squeezes that seal out. It, I mean, about as flat as it's going to get around that, it's going to be perfect. But, just be aware of that. Uh, just in case your uh, valve covers or valve cover kit I don't even know what brand this is this is part of the problem with uh, you know aftermarket seals and stuff that you run into Let me show you the easiest way to get the valve cover seal installed. Okay, let's see here. Figure out the, the direction that it goes and start at a corner and get a corner started then come up get the next corner started come up to the next corner get it started and try to get the corners done first and any recesses like this once you get that done then do the the straight, uh, the straightaways here, because you can see how you can stretch the seal one way or the other. And if you try to just start from like one corner and go around, you'll have a whole bunch of seal that's not wanting to go in and and everything else. So it's generally the way I do it anyway you'll eventually be able to get all the way around. And there you go. Okay, let me get set up on the car. Alrighty guys, we're ready to go back together. Got the valve cover here. Just finished putting the seal in it. Made sure that there wasn't any debris anywhere. couple of the bolts started then I'll start running them down 
and again I'm going to uh, start in the middle and I'm just going to go back and hit them with my hand make sure that they're as tight as I want them to be Valve cover's done. Now this bracket here, fortunately, stayed intact. I think that was the only one on this whole thing that didn't break. Got the little resistor, or capacitor, whatever it is. I'd have to look it up to see what it is, but don't forget to put it on. I think that went that way. If it didn't, we'll swap it around. Um, oh, I've got to clean the uh, spark plug holes out. If you got oil down in there, clean them out. I'm also going to pull this boot off and I'm going to clean it up real good. It looks worse than it actually is. The boot itself actually feels uh, pretty good. It's still nice and pliable. It's not brittle. It's not cracked. It's just got cake burnt oil on it, basically. that around that spark plug hole do the same to this side let that soak that oil up spray it out with some uh, Break clean. Which, by the way, I looked up the other day. Someone had made a comment that uh, on one of my videos I did a uh, mass airflow clean and I used brake clean on it. 
and he made a comment saying, oh, you should have used uh, Mass Airflow Cleaner. So, I got on the internet, pulled up the MSDS for Mass Airflow Cleaner. It's 98% acetone. Pulled up the MSDS for Brake Clean. It's 98% acetone. So, I'm pretty sure you're safe using either one. Um, just saying. You know, a lot of these chemicals, people advertise them. These companies will advertise them. For specific things to get people to buy you know if you already had some brake clean well you wouldn't have to buy anything to clean your throttle body if you knew it was pretty much the same thing so they make the same exact thing and they label it throttle body cleaner next thing you know now you've got a can of throttle body cleaner you got a can of brake brake clean company made extra money Okay, now let me take a look at this intake. Alright guys, so these seals right here, although they're very pliable, they're pretty flat. Hold on just a minute, let me, let me check something. Alright, so basically, I just ran a straight edge across these. These things are pretty flat. I'm not 100% comfortable with that. I'll reuse nice pliable gaskets and seals, but they need, to be, they need to be standing more proud than what these are. These, yeah, they're just not, uh, they're not going to seal off, I don't think, as good as what they're going to need to seal off. So, unfortunately, I've got to get cleaned up and run up to the uh, auto parts store but it's not all a waste because I also need the boat so I'm gonna get cleaned up head up to the auto parts store get an intake kit for this thing and uh, I'm gonna boat and I'm gonna try to make this country great again you guys take care I'll turn the camera on when I get back when we're going back together with the uh, intake Okay, everybody, I'm back. I got the seals, uh, went, I boated, uh, got me a bike to eat, went by the store to get some uh, new jug, a hand cleaner. So, the seals that I got are these right here. Um, I'm going to put up these, I remember when these were six bucks for an entire set. Which is one reason I went and made sure I voted. Because these were now $21. I'll put a link to where you can get them for $10. Uh, so you can pre-order them before you do this job. But uh, as much as I like to support my local businesses. And even though the... You know, I'm not actually paying for this. I'm being paid to do this, and whatever it costs me to do it, I'm adding to the bill. But, it's ridiculous how expensive this stuff has gotten. So, these are pretty simple to replace. You just uh, stick them in just like that. And I don't think I showed you. I actually laid a straight edge across this, and there was virtually no seal that was sticking up higher than the uh, surface of the plenum 
so that's why I'm replacing these. If there was any amount really at all sticking up, I probably would have, but I would have been fine with it. There's not pressure on this. In fact, it's it's a vacuum. You know, it's it's an intake. It's pulling, you know, uh, pulling air through this. So it's not like it's got to be a very, you know, a really super tight seal, but it needs to be tight enough to where it can't suck air past it. So let's go ahead and take these rags out. I guess we ought to put the coils in. So one coil, two coils. Okay, hold on. Hopefully that's a good angle for you. And again, since I actually uh did a little bit of work there, just gonna make sure those are clean. Just, I'm not tightening these up all the way right now. I'm just making sure the intake plenum will suck down where it needs to go. And it did. So now I'm just going to, I've got my clutch set on my DeWalt. I'm just going to start right here. circle all the way around, make sure I got them all. And then, it's just hooking everything back up. There. That one wasn't hooked up when I took it off, but we're going to put it back on. Okay. Again, this is actually 28 millimeters, so um, if 
you don't have a 28 millimeter, make sure you have a crescent wrench that will open up that big. And if you're not easily able to get this broke loose, the other option is to remove the EGR from the intake itself and leave it connected to the tube. hose here. Now an easy way to, well I say it's going to be easy. Let's see. Sometimes if these things are not too tight, you can go ahead and put the clamp on. Let's just take a little bit of oil. Lube her up real good. And you can generally push the hose on and now you don't have to worry about that clamp. So that's on. I think. I think we've got everything back here. Vacuum hoses on. Now I'm going to put a link to all the seals and gaskets that you may want to order, including the throttle body. I mean, it's not going to hurt to replace it, and it'll be cheap enough. But if you, you know, if you don't have it, as long as it's still pliable and it's sticking up higher. than the surface and what I mean by that is you can see how that gasket's sticking out so whenever that throttle body bolts up to this it's gonna you know it's gonna have plenty of compression as long as those gaskets those rubber gaskets like that are in that kind of shape there is absolutely no reason why you can't reuse them Now we got a vacuum line. Like, well, I guess that's a vacuum. Might be a vent, vent hose. I didn't notice that before. It didn't look like it, that it was hooked up to anything. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to find out if this is supposed to be hooked to something. I'm not seeing anything on the throttle body. I didn't notice that when I took it off. I mean, there's nothing around. There's nothing around there that looks like. That may just be a vent. But I don't know for sure. I'll, I'll take a look before I call this a done deal. I remember the studded one was down here. I'll go ahead and get this one in. All right. 
you know, I mean, that, where's that going? I wish I could see where it was going. That would tell me what I needed to know. Okay, that's a vent. That's going to the top of the transmission. So this line right here, that on this car is kind of dry rotted and uh, open, is going to the top of the transmission. It's just a vent. So let me take a look back in the back just to make sure that I didn't forget. Oh, yeah. nope, I got that. Okay. I see one thing I forgot. I got one of these brackets that actually didn't break. You know, some of the stuff that's plastic on cars is, is fine. But man, some of it, some of it needed to be either metal or a better grade of plastic. Or you know, aluminum, something. I'll blow this uh, air filter box out. Okay, next I guess is the air box. Now I should have bought a filter. When I was there, I didn't even think about it. Forgot all about the filter. So the filter's gonna have to wait. I want to zip tie this. Uh, <clears throat> I'm going to zip tie that hose up out of the way, and then we're going to put the cover on, and we'll start it up. Only thing left. 
as the cover. Covers on minus the uh, the one that's down below that wasn't on it to start with. Um, start it up. crucify me for not cleaning the valve cover spotless a couple different reasons I didn't bother with it one you obviously can't see the valve covers either one of them you can see a little bit right there that's about it and yeah it's a good practice to clean all that stuff up to where it looks brand new and I totally agree with that but for one I'm charging I'm saving these people about half of what it would cost them if they took it to a shop probably even saving them about two-thirds if they took it to the dealer second I don't have a uh, solvent tank or a, any kind of a cleaning tank that I can easily put these in and scrub that off real quick you know with, with a solvent uh, and, and spend just a very little amount of time of doing that I would have literally had to go out there in the yard and uh, spray this down with some degreaser and scrub one up by hand and probably spend another 15 or 20 minutes trying to clean those up it's just not worth it it's not I wouldn't have even done it if this was my own vehicle I would not have bothered with that it, it's irrelevant to me um, is it good practice absolutely clean that stuff up and make it look brand new but you know it depends on how much time you want to spend on something if you want to spend you know 15 20 minutes scrubbing on something and trying to make it all look brand new even put a fresh coat of paint on it if you want to go that you know that extreme perfectly fine but look at the rest of the you know the rest of this engine should I have also cleaned everything else up you know all back in here you know if it had brand new looking valve covers on it that would have been great but then you kind of would have felt like the rest of this needed to be clean now if if I really wanted to do that, I could have kept this cover off, wheeled it out in the driveway a little bit, uh, hosed the uh, top of this whole engine apartment down with some degreaser, let it set for a little bit, and then I could have hosed it off. And I could have still actually done that, and it would have cleaned a lot of this up. But, <clears throat> you know, did this fix the problem? Absolutely. The, the oil leaks should have been taken care of with the valve cover gaskets and... Uh, all that 
did it really need to have the exterior of the valve covers clean? Eh, no, not, not to fix that problem. Is it good practice? I totally agree it is. And if I was working in a shop and I had a solvent tank that was uh, right there handy, uh, I would have walked it over and I would have, you know, uh, scrubbed that off real quick. Wouldn't have taken five minutes if you have the proper tools. I don't here. So anyway, uh, go ahead and, uh, you know, give me a thumbs up if you want. And if you didn't really care for this video, go ahead and give me two thumbs down. Anyway, we'll talk to you later. Bye.